Now when we teach these beginning students, I only want one instructor in here teaching from here on out. And that will be Bob. Everybody else will be helping Bob. That means if someone's going to explain a technique, it comes from one person only. That way we keep the system pure. That way we keep interpretations, different interpretations, out. There's only one interpretation of the system. That comes from C. Joe to Seagull to Sifu to me to you. So if I have seven people teaching seven different students, and each person thinks that a technique is to be shown a certain way, then you're going to have seven different uh, interpretations of that technique. There's only one interpretation, there's only one way of doing it. So Thursday night, we'll have probably 10 to 15 new students come in. And from 7 to 8, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, the regular students can come in from 6 o'clock and just stay right on, right? 6 o'clock on, but they can't. Once the students start working out at 7 o'clock, they won't be able to work out in this area. They just have to help. They just have to help. Now, from 6 to 7, you'll have your regular... intermediate students. The ones that have gotten past the basic techniques and to the forms, and they'll be working out from six to seven. Even then, I only want Bob to do the instructing and everybody else to help out. If there's any questions on any techniques, you come to me. If anybody has a problem with the technique, and one person says something and the other person says another, you come to me right away so we can correct it. And there'll be a set way to teach from here on out for beginner students. There'll be a total workout for them. I want them to feel that when they, they're supposed to be here at 7 o'clock, if they're not here at 7 o'clock, they're late. Starts at 7 o'clock sharp. And what you're going to do at 7 o'clock is you're going to start with a non-aggressive exercise. It's going to be set down. They're going to know exactly what they're supposed to do starting at 7 o'clock. And today we're going to uh, decide exactly what we're going to teach these people and how we're going to do it. It's not going to be like they're going to come in and they're going to learn two or three different techniques at one time. And then the next time they come in, which would be only a couple days later, they're going to learn a couple more techniques. No, it's not going to work that way. They're going to come in the first day. They're going to learn the non-aggressive exercises and the aggressive exercises after that. And on the first day, and then from there on out, they're going to learn one technique per week. That's per week. And they're going to work on that technique only. So it's going to take them at least 10 weeks to go through the basic techniques. Or more, depending on, uh, on how they progress. So on the first day, there's a list here. I want us to get this list down today. Some of these things I don't, I don't really understand what they are on here. But the first thing you do when you teach anybody, you teach them non-aggressive exercise. That's sort of warm up their body. You want them to be a little loose. This is almost going to be like a, a an exercise course, for them, but the martial arts will be there. They're going to be good at what they're going to be doing because it's going to take their time learning it. So in the beginning, they learn the non-aggressive stretching exercises. That's the ones where they're sitting down and kind of moving around. That's the ones that they're doing either uh, by themselves and in two-man sets. And then they go to the aggressive type uh, exercises where they're moving. And they're doing uh, almost like aerobics. That's aggressive. Non-aggressive is where they're sitting down and they're doing everything slowly. 
I want them to feel like they're really getting something out of it every time they come and they're getting a good workout. And it's only going to be for one hour, two days a week from 7 to 8. So it starts at 7. It's not going to be either coming here at 7 o'clock and they stand around for 10 or 15 minutes before they do anything. No, at 7 o'clock, they, they have to be ready at 7. That means they should be here before 7 so they can change and be ready to go. So in their mind, they're going to be structured that they're to be here at 7, and that's part of their discipline. And if they're not here at 7, they have to go to the instructor and uh, excuse themselves. I'm just sorry for being late. I don't want them to just come in here and just join the class. They can't join the class if they come in after 7. Go to an instructor first on this R, and then he lets them into the class. Other than that, they come and they stand on the side. Because of it, so it's going to be a structured class, it has to start at a certain time and ends at a certain time. Everybody understand that? Also, in the beginning, they're going to learn the breathing along the start. That's part of their training in order to be able to develop the Wing Chun breathing. They have to learn the other little breathing exercises. On how to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth and the nose. That's part of the first, the first lesson and every lesson from there on out. So the first 20, 20 to 30 minutes will be doing the uh, stretching exercise. Then the next half hour will be doing a technique. And Jack's going to change these techniques around so they're in order. The first technique that they'll learn is the stance. And from the stance, they'll learn server and sal. Then they'll go to the punching. And then from there, they'll go to the moving. And then they go to the turn body this function. And I feel that the first technique that they should actually learn <coughs> would be tan sal, because that'll keep their arm in the center of the body. And the next technique would be lop sal, because all they have to do is turn it over and move it. And then lan sal. Also in the center, and then Gan Sao. Then they go to Bill G. Then they go to the most difficult exercise or technique would be Lean Sao. And by that time, over two months have elapsed from the beginning of their uh, lessons. And then they can go into kicks. Because then they have a strong stance, strong legs, their legs are uh, stronger than when they first came, they're not shaking it. And then they can go into the low kick. And even on here it says, uh, even though it says a uh, front kick and a side kick, the front kick will be fully uh, past the beginner stage before they go to the side kick. That means they learn kicking from standing, then into a stance, and then they go into the side kick. But every morning, for every uh, lesson, they've been doing this stretching exercise for the kicks in the beginning. Sort of train their body in order to do that side kick. So that, if we do it that way, I feel we won't lose as many. It'll only, almost be like going to school, but they'll sort of enjoy it. Because every time they'll be learning something new. So maybe on Tuesday night, they learn a technique. On Thursday night, they learn to do a two-man set. Okay. So they only learn one technique a week. All right, now, you've got six to seven intermediates, and then you've got uh, seven to eight beginners. And then eight to nine, can uh, the advanced just stay on? Is that all right? What do you say? Okay, you've got 
uh, the, the emphasis from six to, although the, the regular students can be here just working out uh, from six to seven, then you got beginners from seven to eight. What about, the, say, the advanced students? Can they stay from eight to nine? Is that right? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, okay. That's what we decided. And we didn't say that again. No, but we kicked that one. Okay. And then we're keeping the Saturday. 9 to 11. Right? 9 to 11. That's only for students who are in the dummy techniques. They don't have to have finished it, but they have to be into it. Then in the summer, if, uh, if they want to learn a weapon, then they're to come to the seating Tell them what they want to learn. You know, they're going to tell you, I want to learn the sword or I want to learn the staff. So once we get enough people who want to learn, then we'll set up a uh, specific class at a certain time. And that way uh, uh, we'll have the people. And all the advanced students will be there too. And all the advanced students should know the staff and the sword by now. Uh, Bradley, you work. Uh, you can work on that as part of your uh, uh, aerobic type training. Uh, Bradley, you work on the Wing Chun as much as possible, especially working on the uh, six and a half point pull and the Wing Chun knives. Are there any questions on uh, what we're going to be doing or why we're going to do it? Yeah, I see when you say. <coughs> After he shows them exactly what uh, what's to be done, then you can have one advanced student on one beginning student. Or make sure that their legs are in proper position, make sure that their arms are in the center. But when it comes to explaining, explaining the technique, or explaining why we're doing it this way, or explaining how the technique is done, I only want one person. That way, if, if you fully don't understand how we do the technique, or why we do the technique this way, uh, then you won't be telling them something off the top of your head. And that's why I only want one person to do it. That way, you can correct them, make sure they're in the proper stance. But as far as explaining the technique, I only want one person to do it. And that way, everybody will know the system exactly as it is taught. There won't be any variations. That way, if we... Uh, I expect that this class will get bigger and bigger, and then we're going to have to expand somewhere. So let's say if you come to me and you say, uh, uh, seeing out, I have a, a community center over here that, that uh, I think we could open up a class. Well, then what I would do is to have one instructor there. That would be one of the advanced students. Whoever that advanced students came to me and wanted to do something like that, fine. But it's only one person going to be teaching. Other advanced students will be there, but you would be the instructor. And it's the same setup. One instructor, plenty of advanced students, but only one person explaining. And then you would always come to this class. So you would always know exactly how the technique is taught, how it is explained, the function of the technique, why we have that kind of technique, the purpose, and the essence of the technique. You all understand that? You understand why it has to be done that way? Yeah, I understand because I have a different when I when you used to tell me the help, you know. I was helping here but over there everybody teaching say and I understand so many ideas in the destroy the real system. And I think I 
Allah is doing the day in and year. I tell them many times that please don't teach me because uh, so many confused. Mm -hmm. I tell one thing, somebody is coming in, some three people are around. All right, well, this is in the past, okay? I don't want to hear any more about yeah, what somebody's see. done or what uh, this is how it's going to be from here on out. Some, some, we, I, we explained it, but some they get upset. Yeah, I understand that. That's why I'm doing it this way. That's why we're going to go by these. Uh, No student shall teach or correct another student on any technique unless authorized to do so. No one's authorized to do so from here on out. Only one is Bob. He can teach him, he can correct him. Okay. Your basic function would be to, to think as one. Now, if you don't understand it, and if you don't understand it, if Bob explained it, then you come to me, and I'll explain it to you. But also, when Sigong and Sijo comes, if they come in September, everybody has to be the same. There can't be any variation. So if there is a correction to be made, then it would be easily to be corrected. Because everybody's doing the same thing, all we have to do is change. So it actually, by doing it this way, it's going to help you all. There's only one way to do it. Now, because of body structure, it may look a little different. Or you might not be able to do it uh, exactly like it's supposed to be done. But as long as you strive for that perfection and you know exactly where it's supposed to be. You know exactly that your elbow is supposed to be in the center of the body. It's not out here. As long as you're striving to move that elbow to the center. That's all right. Any question? I just have one that you may want to address later. I don't know. In the event that I'm sick or something, I can't make it in. So I, I call you and you take care of it. There. Time. But, uh, uh, if Bob is not here for some reason at all, then something will be set up. But still, there will be one instructor and only one person correct. That way, if there is a question, I can correct it right then and there. But if everybody's teaching and I don't know, who, and I see somebody doing something wrong over here, and I don't know who taught them that or, or why it's why it was taught that way or how they got it, and I don't know how to correct it. So by this way I have full control over the school. And from starting next week, if you have friends or relatives who want to take classes here, or anybody you know, this is the time to start it. And the great schedule is $25 a month. Straight 25. 25. Yes. Even for the first couple months. If they're friends of yours, it's straight 25. If you don't know them, but they've shown an interest, it's $50 for the first two months. But friends, relatives, or people you know personally, $25 straight because it's just one hour, two days a week. They only show up one day a week. They can show up one day a week too and still get the same. It's just they're only going to come and it's still $25 a month. And if they can't afford it, I also need to barter it. They have to come to me. I know exactly what they're going to offer the school. And then after, um, well, starting next week when we start with these students, uh, how many other students are part of this class? You mean uh, new how students? How, no, how the many old, students? The older students are into the W technique? Jeff? Gene. Gene. Bob. 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 Bob.
Sam. Sam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I say again. King Glenn. Jim Glenn. The, the Kent. Uh, glasses. Oh, oh Kent. Kent. Yeah. Kent. Yeah. Kent. Uh, and then there's Jim McGlynn tattoos. Uh, but uh, he comes, he says he's going to come. Yeah, you know, James. He stopped, he stopped by a couple of times. So there's about five. Yeah. And the other one, the only, you know, this game is all like. Yeah. Oh, April. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have a chronological list made up. i got someone doing the designing and everything. But I need to have uh, someone make up the chart so that we can have it printed up with the, uh, the list. So the chronological order of everybody from uh, Nimoy on down. You can do it from uh, UNK sound on down, and then I'll give you the rest from there on up. The, the true line. Uh, so now are you going to make that in like a poster form type uh, thing for the school campaign on the wall? Yeah. yeah. And then the only people that will be on the wall will be the people who have finished the dummy techniques. I feel that if they're not through the dummy techniques, then they're still not part of the system. That means, you know, if you just join the class and you're here for about uh, uh, one year and you're only in the first or second form, no. if you drop out within the first few months, no. you got to be through the dummy techniques and tested on the dummy techniques before you can be put on that chart. I'm, um, I'm right now developing a, uh, we have a, a list that was developed of the dates of all the students. Mm -hmm. I'm going to catch everybody up, put them on cards, and then I'm going to give it to Jeff Seister, who has a computer, and he's going to keep, he's going to update the computer stuff for us. So we'll have everybody's date that they came in. And if you want, we can put a space in it just to put it in one, two, dummy, Bill G, and you have a code mm -hmm. under the name if you'd like to do that. Those are the dates of the waiver forms. I'm April. So those are the dates of the waiver forms, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. not exactly accurate, but... Uh, as close as we can get at this point. <coughs> if you came in 10 years ago and you got a date of a waiver form 10 years ago, it's going to be hard to remember whether it's a day or two before or a week or two before. I mean, uh, oh, I know. I mean, it's the only, only written proof we've got in the end. Of the year. Saying out, I might take a line I typed up here and see if the spelling is correct on the names, the Chinese names. Maybe two or three 
pay me so weak, and that's too fast. This way, this is the way it's going to be done, and if they don't like it, they can drop out. But I think in, in response, to, I think that's traditional in America. Seeing, I mean, uh, every martial art that I've ever known, you get a big dropout right because somebody wants to come in and learn it in two weeks. And I don't know any of them that you can learn in two weeks. You know, and they all want it all right now, and it just doesn't work that way for any of them. And so that's, I think that's not particular to this particular system. I mean, it's not just Wing Chun. I think the issue is to develop good Wing Chun students. They don't want to stay, and they don't stay. Mm -hmm. That's what you want, isn't it? Okay, the purpose. Okay, to develop the Wing Chun system. The second purpose is to give them a good workout, so it's like going to a regular aerobics uh, type uh, session. Not like aerobics, but they're going to get a good workout. The next step is to develop their discipline. If they're not here at 7 o'clock, they're not taught. But they come to the instructor, excuse themselves, and he allows them into the class. Okay. And by doing it in a structured sense like that, then the technique will be mastered in a shorter period of time. Because that's all they're going to work on. Like in the first two weeks, they might not do any shifting. Might be all techniques they, they can do it from a stance. So you know, when we set up this rigid schedule, and then somebody who wants to come in and they're interested in it, you want you don't want me to just take my time and sit down and talk. Everybody be able to talk to anybody that comes in about the system. Right. Or should they have already done so outside? In the beginning, that's why I want everybody here on those nights. Because what will happen is, by you talking, they can listen to you. Or if I'm here, they can listen to me. And that's exactly what they're going to tell you new people. So then everybody can talk about the system. I don't mind you uh, using different uh, uh, examples, but uh, don't be using, uh, don't explain a technique by something you read out of a book somewhere. Make sure that whatever you explain to them, you either heard it from myself, Sifu, Sigo, or Sijo. And in that respect, you keep it pure. And everything is the same. If you go somewhere else, you're saying the same thing. Bob, you want to go to the first one? You want to follow? All, everybody follow. Make 
make sure the wrist is over all the way. You can open the fingers up because in order to get the wrist down, the fingers will probably have to be open anyway. Keep the elbows in. And it doesn't go up at an angle, it goes straight out. The wrist goes straight out. Keep the elbow in. It goes out totally to the side. Show that again, bro. All the way to the side. Make sure your elbow's on the bottom when you grab. That's what I'm checking. I don't know. But yeah, I do a stream. Yeah, that's what I have, isn't it? Okay. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, I'm 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 good. your elbows down to the side. Make sure you come in, push it out. comes down. Bring it down. Comes out about a 45 degree angle. It's coming down. Snap it down. Not out. Down. Not out. Down. Off. All right. Do it. Do it with the speed you're supposed to do it with. Comes down. Once. 
fluid motion. Pop, pop. in here. Just a small half circle here. Make sure you have that downward motion. It doesn't come straight back. It's a downward motion. But you're not going down like this. Just next technique. From here, circle, comes out, when you, punch, when you strike here, bring it down, keep the elbow down, Remember that little motion, so. This one you did over here. This one's out here, but only goes this far. Stand tall. Okay. Same as the first or second one. Same thing. Like bring it over. Bring it over.
this thing all the way over. See, what, what happens is, if you try to keep the fingers together, you won't be able to bend it over as far as you're supposed to. And that's why the fingers come open here. But, when you regularly, when you have the hand, that doesn't mean the hand uh, and the fingers are not supposed to be together. Only on this technique, the fingers open up slightly. downward here. Same thing with the wrist. And now, listen. Go to the side. Doesn't come back. From here. Elbows on the side, but the hand's not coming back at an angle like this, going to the side. Working the wrist. Everything is soft. Alright, working the wrist. Push it out. Push it down. Push it out. Keep it down. Push it out. Keep it down. Push it out. You understand what I'm saying when I say push it out? You have it up here like this, make it come out. I like you're pulling it out of joint. Side. Same whipping action. It's got to be soft in order to get the whip. This is a block. For a block coming. So the elbow is actually in the center. But the hand is to the side. From here. From here, watch, watch the hand. Comes to the center, a little motion, and then up. Bring it over. Same thing, elbow on the bottom. Turn to the center, then up. Elbows in. How far out from your body is the now? Elbows are in. Even on the uh, final? On the final one. Elbows are in. You gotta sink in order to keep your elbows in. And the technique 
out. If these elbows are out, the elbows have to be in. Y'all understand what you're doing? Elbows are in. Not out right here. This is what you're doing. Okay. Elbows so are in. Into correct. your body. Into your correct. body. Would you do it correct? Comes down like this. Elbows rubbing all the time. What happens is you lose power. You try to block something with the elbows out. This looks to you it might feel in, but it's yeah, not. You can feel it spraying in. But this is more powerful. Yeah. All right. Just come on come here. Up like this, and then back down. And where's this going to go back here? Same thing. Okay. One, two, three, punch. One, no. Doesn't come back. Just come to here. Two, three. Oh, yeah. And then the third one comes all, or the second one comes all the way back. And the third one's out. Make sure your elbow's on the bottom before you grab. From here. One, two, three, one, two. Okay, now on the third one, just come back all the way. You can see this is only the first four. <clears throat> if you can see how much more practicing you're going to have to do in order to get it down properly.
try to get this thing open as close to 5.30 as I can, so if anybody wants to get it at that time, I'm sure it would be pretty. Yes, yes, I am. I'm not answering that. Okay, No, it's not the same as it was. No. Yeah, that's the only thing you can explain now. Yeah, oh, yeah, the breathing's the same, yeah. Oh, it's the same, yeah. The breathing's the same, yeah. Almost. Now it's recording. I'll just leave it. Just leave it on. So all you have to do is push focus every now and then. So you'll see, push focus and it will automatically focus it. Yeah. So you can see it. If something's real close, it'll focus it in right here. But have you noticed the TV is not really clear? I know. TV is not, but it would be if you have a good TV. Oh, okay. I saw it. That's why you just use the focus and look through here. Because it'll be clear. Go ahead and Look through the lens. You see it looks clear. Mm. And you see the little, keep looking through the lens. You see the little red arrow? Yes, the air. That means it's in focus. Yeah, oh, okay. means it's in focus. Oh, okay. And now it kind of disappears. Okay. So this is just the moving, but the camera yeah. is this one, right? Right. I mean, they will take the film. Mm -hmm. just, this. just move this around. And every now and then you like get it in focus by pushing the focus button. Yeah, but I have a Swiss Oak Bird Love 
says. Oh, they never do that. They don't all have nothing there. Okay. Oh, they won't take it. Oh, right. So no. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
These are nice. Did you buy these? No, these are the plugs. Is that one? They're a little bit too too long for when you shut down. They should be taped. So they have one here, come out, see my hands, they're parallel to each other, my elbows come the same distance, come out just like an egg, coming back, and right here, shot downward, egg, come back, that snap. Just one fluid motion, though.
shoot it up. No. Comes down. It doesn't touch here. Yeah. It can touch. Okay, so we're going. It's like you're guiding it. You strike, you're guiding it, you strike. So it's basically coming back like this. Pop. Not for this. Okay. It's the block here. Pop. Using the elbow. Pop. It's still a bomb cell though. Mm-hmm. Okay. Make sure you uh, make sure it's loose. From here. Just turn it. Pop. Use the hip. Make sure you're safe. Pop. How high should this be saying? Under the eyes. Okay. See what happens here if someone coming around here like this and you <coughs> back here like this, pop. Okay. Pop. You bring them down. Strike. Strike. Or if it's just a punch, you're just coming around, pop. It's moving right in. Either way. Or even from this angle. I'm just coming like this. <coughs> pop. Pop. Mm. If you were using combination, I mean, near combination kicking, because the way you go forward, what leg you were using in the kicking? If you you mean if you want to use a kick? Yes, sir. If you want to kick. Or well, you have to move the weight to the back leg from here. Bring it up, pop. It doesn't have to be a up, 
and in, it could be a, and move in, just a snap. The way Sejo did it was, uh, uh, a lot of times he would just move his leg forward, and then move it back, just a snap, mm -hmm. just like a whip. It didn't have to be a, and then in, just a whip, pop. They move in you take. and do a takedown. Yeah. But if you do that quick enough, it's going to snap that leg. Yeah. Well, so. in this position. Uh, also, what I liked about him was if someone was in a stance like that and he was moving in, <laughs> he, would, <laughs> he would use the snap the other way too. He would come in, pop. And move in. Pow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was still doing a fresh form right there. He was doing that on Siegel. So. <laughs> and that's the reason why Siegel, <coughs> that was between Siegel and myself and Siegel. And that's the reason why uh, Siegel didn't get up when he was, when you were in the room. Oh. And when Siegel <laughs> says, no, 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 Siegel do it. <laughs> <laughs> he knew what was going to happen. And you, see Joe wears the, the hard deep, leather, hard heels. Oh, he does. <laughs> hey, everybody understand? Make sure you're loose. Put the elbow out. Still the same. Slight angle. Slow down, slight angle down, but not that much. on this technique, watch. <clears throat> All right, from here, out, bringing this in, punch, this comes into the center. You turn, here, you strike, here, elbow down. Almost like a technique, like uh, let's see. Uh, you're just turning and blocking here, and just going in. That's basically what you're doing. So I know that's not technique, but in form, as you mm -hmm. and comes across the side. and just snaps out. Pop. Straight. Pop. Straight, straight shot. Mm -hmm. Doesn't come like this. Yeah. It's a straight shot. So it's falling down. You punch here. Mm -hmm. so this an angle. Mm -hmm. Now this is for a for block. Come to an angle. Top down like this. So this man stops there. Right. And goes in. 
it's any higher than that, you come up higher, we're going to get in. So that's why it's down on this is the angle, elbow in, there's no way it come. If he tries to go up down under, pop, hit him with the other hand. So it glides on it and mm -hmm. it doesn't snap into it. All right. On that uh, technique also, another point of interest is the if the strike is coming in, you're not doing this. It's uh, slides in. Slides in. Four. Because my hand still goes up. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not getting that. Right. See what happens is it's going like this. Pop. Okay. Remember on that technique? This one. In the uh, um, out like this, and from here, pop. Uh, okay. All right. So what it is is pop. So it's pop, pop, coming down. <coughs> pop or pop, or move in, pop. You all understand the technique? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pop. So what it happens is you're coming down on them, and it's pop. Same time. Power, power, moving in. So there's a lot more emphasis on elbows. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how you do it again? It's not popping up. Mm -hmm. Moving in, moving in. Because if you pop it up, what happens is the hand goes up in the air. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're redirecting. It's coming in here. You're redirecting it here. Pop, bring it down here. So that's why you bring the elbow down when you strike it. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Brings the arm down. So on this technique, you just you can do either one. You go in or you just float. Mm -hmm. You can either go in here, here, bring it down this way, pop yeah. using your arm, which is a little bit more pressure. Mm -hmm. So it's best just to strike and go in, pop. So it shoots out. I have to get used to that. Get my hips going. But this is still to the sides now. The, the, after you come out here. Mm -hmm. Pop. Here. I can't so see the sides. So. Downward. Not up. So, whatever. 
It's a high kick. Yeah, like this. From here, pop.
Okay, you know the turn. <coughs> turn again. No, just like this. From here. Turn. Moving the uh, on the heel here, and then the ball of the foot here. So you like this. Mainly when you turn, you kick and you go down. Misses directly with the same technique, elbow down, right in front of the groin, it's turning. Hop. Hop. One, two, same thing. No. Okay. Can I see that again? Okay, I'm right here. Right here. Bring that back. From here. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. Hop. One, two. Mm -hmm. Three, center, one, two, and then up. All right. So on that one, two, so you know, the hand coming back goes all the way back. Mm -hmm. It's coming down like this. What it is, you grab, yeah, I know. and it just comes down and it's pop, pop here, and pulling back at the same time. But I meant when you end it, you know, if you do this, <coughs> and, you just and you turn. come back here, is it, is it stop here or does it come back here? On the first one. From here, right. it's already up. Oh. So it's up. That's up. No, oh. good. That's what I'm wearing now. So it does. Mm -hmm. kind of like right. It's more. So you know, before you just finish off there, when you're okay, we shifted here yeah, like this. I can, I can shift it. Hot here. Just stop right here. No. It's like it when the middle thing, I get the whole thing. Just like you do the. Uh, oh, okay. It's the same thing. Okay, I that whole How does that lock apply? Yeah. Sort of it seems, you know, it's close, so I just wondered. Okay, what it is, okay, if you do it, it's like a, uh, uh, yeah, I want you uh, even on a, uh, uh, a strike to the groin, okay, coming down okay. like this. Alright, and you're moving out of the way. Same thing with the, with the kick. See, you're, you're still far enough away. It's coming down at an angle. Pop, so you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're thinking more here. Pop. It has to be directly in front of the groin. A lot of you, what you do is you, you come down at an angle and you do this. Pop. And it's way out here. So if you turn, this is what it looks like. This is what it's supposed to look like. See how more powerful it is with your elbow in? Yeah, it is more powerful. And if you hit with this part here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, so that's what, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions on it? <laughs> yeah, maybe next week. <laughs> Go over it again. Do it slow, get it right. You know, if you have questions, you can ask me after you finish.
this way, it's like holding back on the thing. And then, yeah, and then you know, it's yeah, it's too close. Yeah. You know what it is? It's just too close to the top line. Here it is. Yeah, but not to throw the shoulder out. It's just a thing. Yeah. You can feel it in here. Any question? Can you turn it? That's too far out. Face the center. <clears throat> okay, now turn your body. That's where it's supposed to be. Can you curl right back up? Yeah. Double stage. Thing that's uh, soft. What do you think of your seating, Rick? You doing good. <laughs>
look at it and then give it to me later. I'll correct this and you can do that later. You go over the technique and ball so Finish and shut it off automatically. It shuts off by itself, then? Yeah, I'll just have a full okay, tape. Okay, well. Uh, full tape. I haven't worked out for a while. I'm working on Are you using that? Yes. Oh, okay. Any, I don't know how anyway. Oh. He said he has a little running and shut up our money. Oh, yeah, he said that? Yeah. Okay.
advanced students, you don't pay. I think you just help out with the class. Okay, and that's basically what the uh, I want for. Okay, thank you. Yes. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want the system to be changed by you know different individuals. This is uh, I think so. It's a good idea because so many. I even myself get confused with this too. So if if we have one person and then I see something wrong and then I go to that one person and I say, well, how can we learn like this? And then I explain to them how the technique is supposed to be. Because uh, I don't want to see Joe or see Google people to see differences in the system. Okay. And uh, later on, you know, maybe we'll branch out. And then I'll have everybody will be trained the same way. And all your advanced instructors, maybe I'll stick you in different schools. That's, that's what you're working for. That's how you that's how you pay me back. That and take care of the school and stuff like that. You know what? Uh, you're doing good at it and just sort of keep it up. Just hang in there because sometimes you know. Things of business or this, I will foresee, you know. Oh boy, I can. Mm -hmm. I can't meet them, whatever it is. You ever see that girl Cindy anymore? I saw her sister in law, but I couldn't grab it. You know? I mean, you know, I, I stopped. I think they're still around. I yeah. think they say they were living, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want, don't talk to her sister, just talk to her. Oh, to her? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, no, they're, uh, they're, uh, one, one but if you were. Oh yeah, if I see it, yes, yes. I'll get you back in the shape. As soon as the weather breaks through, that will work too. Yeah, the cold weather, I don't It's It's the weather, and then it's not getting around, and then the, then the cold weather. That's the main thing, sitting at home. I see. How you doing? I'm staying well, where have you been, China? I need to be. <laughs> I've been, I've been, uh, no, I've just been trying to get a customer to marry me. This is very difficult for a long time. I'm telling you. It's a trip. <laughs> Isn't that right out? <laughs> yeah, it's a trip. Marry life is a trip. You know how to turn this thing off? Uh, it's a little run because he showed me, but I don't know how to do it off. So many buttons to uh, just go on off. I think something in the recording over there. He said, touch something. Two buttons and two little paramatics sometimes.